Hello and welcome to your baritone and euphonium maintenance video. So today I'm going to take apart this baritone, show you how it works, show you how to repair it, show you what you need to work, show you how to repair it, show you what you need to do this. Um, all of these supplies you should have, and if you do not have them, you can easily pick them up at a parking shop or a Watson's or at whatever grocery store you're near. Um, the only things that you're not going to be able to pick up are the instrument specific things that came with your instrument in the case, so you should have them. And those things include da -da 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 -da, valve oil. You're going to need valve oil. This is the most important part of what is happening today, is this going in here. So make sure you have valve oil. And then the easier things, slide grease. This came with your instrument as well. You should have it. You'll need your mouthpiece and your instrument, obviously. And then what I recommend you have as well is a microfiber cloth doesn't have to be microfiber, but it has to be a nice cloth. It can be a face cloth, it can be anything. I'm using just a plain white microfiber cloth right here. Sunglasses cases uh, that you don't care if they get dirty are also a really good thing to use. Um, you can use three-ply toilet paper or paper towels, whatever you have lying around that you don't care how dirty it gets because you can throw this in the wash afterwards, but you will need it. Um, I recommend very highly that you have 95% ethyl alcohol. This can be picked up at a parking shop. It can be picked up at a Watson's, uh, wherever. Have your parents pick this up. I have a stack of the makeup removing little circle rounds, cotton swabs, and then I have cotton swabs on a stick, Q-tips. So have those as well. They're going to help you clean your instrument out. So we're going to clean today the slides the valve casings on the pistons, and the mouthpiece itself. So, you'll notice the valve casings themselves have numbers on them. One and three, and you can infer this is two, but they just have the Yamaha words printed there. And on the back side, you can see there's a serial number and these caps on the bottom. Now, each slide or each valve, the, the piston itself, needs to return to the right sleeve. These are specific, so you can't just swap these around when you do it. I'll talk about why you can't later as we do this. So I'm going to unscrew counterclockwise number one, give it a little wiggle, and pull it out. You'll see probably a little bit of miscoloration. This should be very clean and silver, but mine even isn't. So you'll see a little bit of miscoloration. That will be from condensation, depending on how long you've left it. It's probably a little bit of mold, so this is going to be a fun clean. Move your instrument to the side. You do not need to take off the cap or this little part here. There's a little felt pad too, you don't need to worry about that. But the other thing I wanted to point out, see if I can find it, on here, is that these should be numbered as well. But I can't find the number right now, so I will come back to that. Now. First thing you're gonna do is give it a scrub down. You can use your face cloth, you can use your microfiber cloth. I'm gonna use this little cotton pad just to give it a basic wipe down with nothing on it first. Get as much of the gunk off by hand as possible. Just the outside of it for now. So you get a little bit of gunk off there with just the cloth. Then you are going to take one of these cotton rounds, I put the pile there, not the one, and then your ethyl alcohol. Take the alcohol, apply it to the swab, and do the exact same thing. This is going to help lift a lot more of the dirt off a lot faster. All right, so see, got even more off that. You can bunch it up and feed it through the holes. For the first pass, I do this before I use the Q-tips, just to get as much gunk as I can. All right, there you go. There are three layers of holes on the first piston to move through. There we go, you get the last one in here. There we go. That is a dirty cloth. Q2. Ethyl alcohol.
give them a little rub down on the inside, get all that gunk out of there. We never submerge our instrument or its parts in water, because even though most of it is stainless, some parts of it will rust if you do that. That's why we use ethyl alcohol instead of water. It evaporates at a much faster speed and will be dry by the time we're done talking about that. Notice this ethyl alcohol will start to just dry super quick. It'll disappear. And there we go. We have a clean, prepared slide. All right, not slide, piston. We're going to open up this valve oil. We're going to give it three drops. One, two, three. Just kind of around it. If you're noticing anywhere that needs a little extra drop, give it a drop. Move it around, let it drip. Then you're going to move your instrument back and slide it on in. Kind of twist it around there, get it dispersed. While you're twisting around, notice if you just shove it all the way down, it doesn't go down. It doesn't play like these valves do. Because you need to grab it, and as you're pushing down lightly, move it around until click. it enters the right hole. So you'll see on your valve, on the piston itself, you'll see this little ring, and they have little bumps. And there's a corresponding bump hole in the instrument. I'm not sure I'm able to show you that on camera, but you can see in here, there's a little indent right where my pinky is. That's where that little extra bump lines up. So you push it down and then rotate it clockwise until it pops down. And then once it's in there, screw it back on until it's flush with the others. And then just play with it a bit so that it gets all nice and valve oily in there. Now, I'm gonna do it with the second one. I'm gonna do it quicker. I'm going to get a little bit more ethyl alcohol to clean out the holes in the piston. Make sure you get all three passageways. See, there you go, that's a nice, that needed cleaned. And then you have a nice clean, prepared slide ready for your three drops of valve oil. Right there. Slide it back on in there. Move it around, make sure it gets the oil on the inside of the sleeve. While I have this out, I will also point out the reason that we can't switch these three pistons between the different valve sleeves is because of where these pipes end up. If you look at this, the distance between these two pipes is the same as the distance between these two right here. These two holes line up with these two pipes. Now, if I put it in the wrong one, these two holes would not line up with these two, these two holes are even in the wrong direction than these two. So the air would not pass through. So I make sure it's lined up. I can push it down without any extra pressure. And I will go ahead and screw that cover back on. And make sure it gets played with so that it is nice and oiled on the inside. Last piston, pull it on out, give it a scrub. Make sure there's no fuzzies left. I'm gonna grab a clean Q-tip for this one. three of the passageways. Make sure, sometimes there are blemishes that aren't dirt, so you can't remove that obviously. Give it a little wipe down, apply your valve oil.
throw it back on in there. Do not force it. Just kind of wiggle it in. See, these two holes are going to line up down here. These two holes are going to line up there so that air can properly pass through. Put it in there. Screw that cover back on. And then we make sure all three of our valves are moving smoothly. Yay. So, move aside the stuff that you just got dirty. You're gonna push down the all three at the same time. You're gonna pull out the furthest slide away from you, right? Why we push these down when we remove slides is so it doesn't create a vacuum where it's pulling back at you when you pull it off because that can actually damage the inside of the instrument. So whenever you move slides on any brass instrument, you always hold down the valves before you pull. So this is much the same process. You're gonna take a cotton swab, you're gonna put some ethyl alcohol on it and rub it down. nice little patina off that. Now, you're gonna grab a phone with a flashlight or a flashlight, old-fashioned flashlight. Take a look inside. Let me hold it up so I can see it and then I'll show you. To see what is inside these holes. There should be a little bit of patina, you know, it's from regular wear. Not the end of the world. But whatever you can do, try to get it out but make sure you do not lose a foreign object inside your instrument because that is something you can't repair by yourself. You'll need to take it in. Once a year, you should be taking your instrument in to get it chemical bathed. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you do not have the required instrument cleaning chemicals at home, nor a bathtub that your family would let you fill with chemicals to put your instrument in. So we're just doing the basics here. So see, already I got a lot out of there. And there's even more down there that we are unable to clean, but unless there's a chunk obstructing your airway, then this would be good. Slide grease. Tiny bit on your finger, just a little bit more. And you're going to evenly spread it on the two slides. It should be a very thin coating, it should not be thick, you should not be able to see it once you're done, other than a little bit of extra shine, right? If it's too thick, it will actually start to solidify after time and make your slide freeze, which is kind of counter to the point of what it's supposed to do. So once you are done, valves down, grab your instrument and gently wiggle for the first little bit and then slide it in. Move it to make sure you have some give there it should not be so smooth that it slides out of your instrument constantly, but you should be able to pretty easily close it all the way and slide it out. There should be a little bit of feedback, but not too much. All right? Same thing with the second. This is the big one on the bottom with the spit valve on it. Now this one is a little bit stuck on mine. There we go. Make sure that's what happens. This is actually one of the school instruments, and it's been bent a little bit, so these two aren't perfectly lined up parallel. So getting it in and out of the instrument is a little hard. If it bends inwards, you won't be able to fit it in. If it bends outwards, you won't be able to pull it out. So make sure you treat your instrument incredibly delicately. Take your ethyl alcohol swab, rub down these slides, get as much off of it as you can. All right, and then slide green. Now make sure when you're doing this, you know which way you took it out so that you don't put it back the wrong way, right? Because these are actually different widths. This is thicker than this. So I'm gonna go ahead, push my valves down, put in the long side first, and then wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until that's lined up, make sure it's fitting, and then wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There we go, we're back in. 
I'm gonna pull it out a little bit more. I can see where almost the instrument tan line is, so I'm gonna put it there because that's where I tune to most of the time. Still gonna need to tune afterwards, of course, though. Third one. I'm going to get a new cotton swab. And rub it on down. That one got a good amount off. Okay. I'm going to then grab my, not my valve oil, my slide grease. A little bit on each side. You get a nice little spin in your hand. You can just kind of like hold your hand over it and then go whoop, 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 whoop. Get it covered. These are both the same size, not often the case, so I can put it back in the way it came, holding down the valves the whole time to make sure I'm not creating a vacuum, and that slides in beautifully. Now, flip over your instrument. We have no other slides on this. If you are a euphonium player, quite often there's a slide back here, you will follow the exact same strategy of pulling it out oiling it up and putting it back in. If you have a fourth uh, piston and valve, then you will do that as well. But that's it for the actual maintenance on the instrument itself. Then we gotta talk about this, your mouthpiece. Now, the mouthpiece itself, you're, you have a big enough mouthpiece that you can look in it and see if there's anything in it, but hold the flashlight up to it. Hold it to the back of your instrument and look inside. See if there's any patina, any kind of chunks, this is why you do not eat before you play your instrument, because anything that's in there is definitely in there as well. And then you're going to take a Q-tip, clean Q-tip, ethyl alcohol, put it in there, and just kind of move it around, like cleaning your ears. Make sure you get everything out of it that you can. This is a lot easier on a big brass instrument like trombone or euphonium or baritone horn because a q-tip will fit all the way down your mouthpiece. French horn and trumpet is much harder. Make sure you pay particular attention to this, this part of the instrument called the basket of the mouthpiece. That's where your spit hits first, it's the part that gets the dirtiest, and then once you are done, because it will touch your mouth, make sure you get all that alcohol out of there because 95% ethyl alcohol is not normal alcohol and it stinks to breathe it in. Makes you cough a lot. And once you have that, slide it on in. Make sure you wipe down your instrument. Just get them fingerprints off. Take a second right now to go wash your hands just to make sure you're not leaving greasy fingerprints all over your instrument. And then when you are ready, Make sure all your valves work. Press down each valve as you blow. You don't have to play notes right now, but make sure all of the valves are in the right place. Open. The air comes through. Put your first valve down. The air goes through. One and two. The air goes through. Two and three. The air goes through. And then lastly, all three of them. The air goes through. And then, once you feel you're confident and your instrument is ready to go, give it a little play. And there you go. Congratulations on your first baritone maintenance video. I look forward to seeing you and your clean instrument in class.